Welcome back to the 75th episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast Season 3. 75 episodes Amazing. and I am going to say this, this is this is uncharted territories for me. Season 2 had 48 episodes. Season season 1 had 48 episodes. Season 2 had 72 episodes. We are officially 74 episodes, sorry. We are officially more and season two, uh, we are continuing on. People seem to like us, so we are bringing uh, new shows starting November first. But today is horror day. Today is Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone! Uh, before we jump into our, uh, our our guest, I want to talk about the number seventy five for a second because I was trying to figure out how can I make this a horror theme. How can I make seventy five a horror theme? As anyone does when they're trying to figure something out, they go to Google. <laughs> Google's not the best <laughs> answer for that. But according to this, and I'm not sure if this is sort of telling me that I shouldn't be doing this episode, but 75 is actually an angel number. Uh, it, there's meanings behind it. And I'm just going to read this from this one uh, website that was the first one I clicked on. So let's be honest, it's probably not the right thing, but the number 75 is a combination of energies and attributes of the number seven and five. <laughs> we're not talking about angels today. We're talking horror. And to do that, to talk about Halloween, to talk about horror is our horror resident expert, Mr. David Mercer. David, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. I'm, I'm I'm very happy to be here, and congratulations on the 75th episode. That's 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 amazing. Um, I was, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a statistic out there on on podcasts. I found a statistic on indie authors, and most indie authors at most sell, whether it's free or paid, 250 books, and and I have surpassed that number now. So you know, and like I said, free or paid. That's that's the average on in the authors and so i am sure that 75 episodes is well above the the average podcaster so so congratulations on that it's 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 been awesome being on here and you know just seeing all the different stuff you do i mean it's 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 something where you know I, i'm down in the states so for me, you know, I still enjoy listening to some of your political shows as well, because you know, while it's not here, you've got the same problems and it's just it's just interesting how, how, how they go through. So so, you know, other than the horror of politics, any time of year that we talk about, I, I am excited to uh, to talk about, uh, you know, just different different horror genres that we've got stuff going on now and, and all the good fun stuff. So thank you for having me on. Hey, no problem. So David, it is Halloween, no, uh, October 31st, all, uh, all Hallows Eve or Halloween or however you want to call it. Um, what does Halloween mean to you? As a horror author, what does Halloween mean to you? Well, it's, it's, it's sort of like our Christmas, if you will. So this is where we're, we're, we're out, we're, we're, you know, our prep for Christmas, right? We're, we're, we're trying to get people to, you know, get the word out about our books, get the word out about, about different things. And, and also as a consumer for me, it's, you know, I, I like when, when it's a little bit chilly in the evening, right? I, I, I like, you know, getting ready for, for, for Halloween and the trick or treaters and things like that. I, I you know, love taking my daughter, daughter out and all that good fun stuff. Um, I am a fiend for candy corn. So, so candy corn is one of those things that, uh, you know, you can never have enough. So, <laughs> uh, so, so that's good. And then just the, you know, the, the, the spooky stories that you hear about that, that, you know, a couple of years ago where I was from, you know, they had clowns who would just all of a sudden stand on the streets holding up the, the red balloons like from it. And it was just funny and people were getting scared and people were saying, oh, you gotta, you know, we're gonna have to put a stop to this. <laughs> okay, sure, put a stop to it, but it's just fun. So, you know, more people just need to learn how to relax and have fun, I think. Uh, Halloween to me has always been about a time of uh, sort of the like just just to enjoy yourself because kids are back in school in August, September, October, and it's the first big thing because we have Thanksgiving in October, you have it in November down in the States, but it's the first weekend where kids can actually just go be kids, 
dress up, go enjoy themselves. And I can be, I will be honest. I'll be upfront right now. I trick or treated until I was 15 and I'm damn proud about that. I am sorry, but if you gave away free candy, you dang well believe I was there to get that free candy. <laughs> so Halloween to me has always been that special time. And this year was a little bit hard because uh, we were, uh, my partner and I were back and forth. We were going, okay, should we get tr- uh, candy? Should we not get candy? Uh, last year we had about 40 kids to our door this year with the rise of COVID-19 still, are we going to have less? Are we just going to eat all the candy? So, <laughs> so we were just back and forth. So nice. I, I, I will be honest. I went out and bought candy because let's be honest, I want candy. <laughs> That's, so that's, even if the kids don't come, I'm getting candy. I'm 36 years old and I'm still eating candy. <laughs> I'm okay with that. You do not come at me on Halloween. Um, <laughs> the sense in Canada is Halloween is, is becoming more unsafe. The rise of social media, the rise of people not uh, letting their kids go out too far from where their house is. Because when I was a kid, and I'm not sure about yourself, but when I was a kid, my parents dropped us off in the middle of this town and then fucking drove home, pardon my French, because they're like, (laughs) nope, we're done. We're done for at least two hours. What about you? How was Halloween as a kid for you? Oh, it, it, it was great as a kid. And then, you know, when, when I had my daughter, it, it was one of those things where you're exactly right. You, you don't just drop them off anymore, right? It, it, it's something that even when she was was older, thankfully, she still wanted me to go with her when she was still trick-or-treating. I was I was afraid it was going to get to that stage where, where, you know, about 13 or whatever going, Dad, can I just go with my friends? And I'm going, you mean I don't get a share of the candy? <laughs> Yeah, I'll get I'm gonna cut of the take, you know. And uh and so so that's uh you know, I, I can believe that, but also when when we were trick-or-treating, you know, it's been several years now, you know, you would see kids running by themselves and you would see adults with, with some of the kids. And it's really I, I don't think that it's got any more dangerous. I think that maybe there's some better parents than ours as far as that goes that are willing to, you know, the, the dad going, okay, I'll go out and walk behind you. You know, I, I can't see my dad doing, doing that once I was past you know, four years old or something. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's something that uh, to me, I, I don't know that it's, that it's more dangerous versus just, you know, I, I'm hoping the kids are using social media to go, Hey, that guy's giving away full size candy bars. <laughs> That uh, we needed social media when I was a kid because what we used to do, and this is going, <laughs> I love this, this conversation because it's going to be so fun. What we used to do when my friends and I would go trick or treating was we would find a house that was giving away like big size candy bars. We would leave, switch costumes, <laughs> go back, and be like, hi, can we have more? Exactly. No, I, I know exactly what you're coming, where you're coming from there. Uh, and for me this year, I may, I may give away copies of my book, right? <laughs> <Free Do it. laughs> Here's the promo code. Here's this. <laughs> Here's this. Yeah, yeah. It's you know maybe it's not appropriate for you. Maybe you know if I change. Oh, you know what? It would be better than raisins and toothbrushes because we all remember those houses. Now my one uncle, he used to give away money, so that was always fun. It was he would just he had little teeny like <laughs> bags of coins that he would give away to the kids. And I'm going, yeah, that's just perfect. <laughs> I, I really like that as a kid. Not really, not old money or anything, just. Here's candy. 20, here's 50 cents. Here's 75 cents. Holy. Exactly, exactly. Can, can, can I come, can I come to your uncle's house? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, now you'd have to. Trick or treat. Like, here's 20 bucks. Here's 30 bucks because of inflation. But yeah. yeah. Um, I want to, I, I do want to hold you to account here though, because you said when you took your daughter out and she started, you were potentially finally saying, Hey dad, I don't want you to come around. You still stole chocolate from your daughter. Oh, Let- <laughs> of course. And, and, oh, you'll love this one. I so. caught my dad in the cookie jar a few <laughs> times. That's why I'm saying that. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so when my daughter was re- really young, you know, when you, when your ki- kids are young, you clean up their rooms. I don't care what anybody, any parent says you're there's time where you're just done and you don't want to fight you just clean it up it just happens and as they get older they clean it up themselves you hope uh, if they're 30 and living in your basement and not cleaning up that's a different story but she was really young and so i'm cleaning up cleaning up and and i found some halloween candy so i didn't think twice i just opened those m&ms dumped them in my mouth 
started chewing this powderly powder like substance and i'm going oh these, these probably went bad i look down there's another bag you know <laughs> you know what's coming <laughs> i opened that other bag <laughs> and just because i was like m ms have never been bad to me before <laughs> and they gotta be good the second time around they gotta be good. <laughs> And needless to say, the other bag was just as bad as the first bag. <laughs> Who knows how old they were? Halloween, oh, uh, like yes. I, the candy that kids get today. I, I'm oh. sorry to harp on this, but when I was out at the grocery store looking for candy to give out this year, I was shocked. I was like, oh. "Where was this?" I remember the lollipops, the little white stick lollipops, and that was like a big and like the random houses would give you like the Kit Kat bar, the Smarties, oh, yeah. and you were like, yes. Now it's like 12 million different types of chocolate. And they're like, okay, where was this in the 80s? Well, yeah, and the, the loose candy. I mean, I mentioned liking candy corn, but I can remember just somebody having a bucket of old candy corn and you're yep. just reaching in and grabbing that. And and I, I I didn't mind, but nowadays it's, you know, everything's cellophane 1500 ways and all that good yeah. fun stuff. And, and I know it's got to be and all that, but still, it's it's one where I, I never took my kid to places I didn't at least know was trustworthy people there. Yeah, it's bad stuff can happen and all that good, good stuff, but you try your best and you try every other piece of candy that they get. That's the rule. So they get one, you get two, they get one, you get three. <laughs> And it, it works they get well. zero you get five it's all good <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, after yeah. The, after two days of them eating candy you take the rest of it and just say it all, it's all gone i don't all know gone. where it went i want to talk about horror houses for a second because as a kid there was a an abundance of horror houses whether yes. it be someone doing it in their garage whether it be someone doing it out on their farm in a rural location um i don't see that these days and i don't see that being popular in Canada anymore. Is it like, is it, is it that way down in the States or are horror houses still around horror farms? The, the sort of the scary moments where you can go walk through the maze. Yeah. It, at least where, where I was from Winchester, Virginia, they still have that. And then I'm in, I'm in North Carolina now. So they even have ghost tours and stuff like that. Uh, and they have several of those haunted houses, but the thing that I've noticed a lot about them is the new ones anyway they're not sort of organic things they're not sponsored by the parks and recreations of parks and stuff like that they are businesses where they come in and it's you know we're setting up this horror house yeah and of course the production value is is spectacular on some of them uh, my my one of my, my co-author she goes to to different places for book signings and has did very well there but yeah so they're still they're still popular here but it's it's something where it is again the more you know produced horror if you will versus just you know i can remember where you know the 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 benefit of being a senior was that you then got to 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 be the scary person in the different you know horror houses and stuff like that in the different towns uh whereas whereas now it's 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 one where again they're they're oh you're you're not gonna pay me I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to lay in this creek for an hour waiting for kids to go by and jump up. <laughs> uh, as this is airing on Halloween, this is Halloween morning. Let's talk about some traditions that we have had and are still do have. What are some of the traditions that David used to do as a young kid getting ready for Halloween? Because I can go through my list and I, I, I was I was writing them down before the interview started. And I was like, holy crap, I was a kid what about yourself well for uh for my daughter's school one of the things that uh, we did we had we had the halloween party right and you know i it was one of the few times i caved to political correctness because I, I really don't care as far as that goes what, what people think in general it's like you know i've got an opinion you don't want to hear it you i don't want to hear yours uh but i did cave and we called it a winter party or winter festival and and, and all that good fun stuff but one of the big things we did was we had uh, we, we got a ton of pumpkins and then after the party was over, we we would have the pumpkin pumpkin smash time where we would throw them off of the deck of the house, and just make a giant mess. And, and one of the best best side effects of, of that festival that we would have were the pumpkin seeds. My wife bakes pumpkin seeds and you want to talk about just something that's just 
totally delicious uh, is, is, is those baked pumpkin seeds. So that's a tradition that, you know, even now, we, you know, she's older, we don't do the smash, but, but one of the benefits of carving several pumpkins is you get a bunch of seeds. <laughs> so so dad, dad's happy. So, dad, I can imagine dad's happy with that. So, so, so I enjoyed that a, a ton. That was one of the, you know, one of my big things. Um, and I also, I, I enjoyed the trick-or-treating a ton with, with my daughter. Uh, and when I was a kid as well, and, and that's a tradition I hope keeps going. Um, I didn't like as much those trunk or treat things. I know the why people are doing them, or at least they do them down here, where it's basically trick or treating, but you go to some parking lot somewhere, like the movie theater would uh, have one, a church would have one. And it's the idea behind it is that you're taking kids to a safe area. All of the adults are people related to the school or the church or what have you. And, and they're going, you know, to different people's trunk and getting candy, which number one, that's a bad idea anyway. But, but as far as, you know, just teaching that to kids, but, 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 you know, I understand. <laughs> that's a horror that, film in itself yeah, right there. Exactly. <laughs> I understand that the, the reason they want to have it that way is it's easy and all that good fun stuff and people would decorate their vehicles. But I really didn't think that she had as good a time there as just running around in the different subdivisions, you know, seeing all the people's houses and how they would de decorate them, stuff like that. So I, I think that's better, in my opinion, but I understand the purpose of it. But it just wasn't something that I really was into. Halloween traditions for us, it, it, we were the last minute family. We were the last <laughs> minute to hang all the Halloween decorations up. I'm 90 percent sure if we if, it, if Halloween was a Saturday, we would be carving pumpkins Friday night. Um, <laughs> nice. Chris would not know what his uh, costume would be until the day after, and it usually ended up being the Charlie Brown ghost. Oh, there uh, you go. That always works. Or, or our go-to of Dracula, because oh, we go. always seem to have leftover makeup and uh, fangs from like 12 years ago, which always tasted great when you put them in your mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the 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 biggest the worst tradition that we had in our in our house in, in, uh, when it came to Halloween was getting home and sorting the candy because my brother and I would have this thing where we would pour the candy in the middle of the living room and then we would start going hey I'll give you two smarties for two <laughs> Reese's pieces and yep. the fights that broke out because oh. oh no that smarty was on my side of the rug no that <laughs> smarty was on my side of the rug so it was the worst best tradition ever because we knew at the end of the day no matter what we got our parents would go nope we're taking the candy away you get none and we'd be like oh <laughs> when i uh when i was working i used to work for the electric company so so when i was working there i worked in the emergency service so you're there 24 hours a day type thing and one of the one of the parents there yeah you know, he'd take his kids out trick-or-treating and evidently he knew the spot to go because they would get you know buckets and buckets of candy you know kids that would have to take two buckets to to do trick-or-treating that night well, so then the next day he would always bring it into the into the office, and he's like, "I slowly sneak candy out of my kids' rooms." <laughs> so I imagine that's a tradition that a lot of parents have. It's it's like, okay, we got to take just enough, but we want to make sure it doesn't look like it's empty now. <laughs> well, where I used to work, they did the exact same thing. We had parents come in the day after the day after, and they had bought like five hundred mini Kit Kat bars or five hundred of those like like whatever yep. and then they would bring them in and be like oh we only had 20 people at our house you said that last year like <laughs> how how are we not planning that we're only going to have 20 the following year yet again i'm gonna eat my candy i'm gonna yep. eat the candy that's in my house i am not sharing it with anyone i've learned <laughs> as a kid you don't get my size by sharing candy that's all i'm gonna say i, I understand completely our uh <laughs> so when my wife and I first got got our first house, we were in a subdivision and we'd never, you know, I'd lived on a, on a rural road. She did as well. So never really had a ton of trick or treaters. Yeah. And, and so, so we get what we think is enough candy about 45 minutes into it. We're out of candy. We turn off the lights. Kids are outside. I kid you not going, we can see you in there. <laughs> Do you have any candy? It's like, Oh my gosh. We I'm scared. <laughs> we lived we lived in a rural route as well. Um yep. so my parents like I said my parents would drive us into town and then they would drive back out because they had had to hand out candy. 
they would give out like the like the two liter bottles of pop, the freaking massive bag of chips and like a massive chocolate bar. And they go, here you go. And here we are, the kids who like their own kids are going into town and getting the rinky dinky stuff. And I'm like, couldn't you have just driven us around to all these houses in our neighborhood? They're like, no, that just take too long. I'm like, wow. Wow. <laughs> Um, I, I had a la- lot of aunts and uncles, so that was one of the fun things too. Is we would they would drive us around to see those different aunts and uncles. And I did the same thing for my daughter as well because it was something that you know, you know, hey, let such and such see your costume and all that. So that that was always fun. So I I, I enjoyed that uh, as, as well. But it's I I just hope that that Halloween's fairly normal this year as far as you know. Yes, COVID's still there and all that good fun stuff. It'll probably be there for the next 50 years when I'm on your show for the 7,057 episode. And, you know uh, it. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm ready. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have new content then. Uh, might be, uh, new books. Maybe, maybe. Or we'll just rehash all the old. There you uh, go. I, this is on my 10,000th book <laughs> I've produced, you know, but no, that would be nice too. Uh, but yeah, no, that's something where I just, I hope that it's, it's normal and that the kids can have fun. Uh, I, I, I agree miss, wholeheartedly on that yeah, statement. I, I miss the Halloween parties. I mean, I, I liked that when I was sort of a teenager type thing where I was sort of, you know, here in the States, you know, I could drink at 18. So yeah, it was one of those here. things where I was still a kid where, where, where adults were having the Halloween parties and the dress ups and stuff like that. Whereas nowadays, you know, a lot of the kids are 21. You you have to be 21 in the States to drink. So I think that's, it's a different magical age that they're missing, right? You know, that, you know, hey, I'm an adult now because I'm 18 and I can drink and I'm hanging out with the, you know, my parents and the adults and stuff like that versus, you know, now it's like they're 21. It's like, oh, big deal. They're drinking. Yeah, it's, it's not as big a thing. So, but I, I, I will be honest and anyone who's ever listened to my show knows I was not the popular kid in high school, so I never got invited to those parties. So I don't know what you're talking about, David. My- These were family parties. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I got a lot. I got invited to a lot of those, unfortunately. I mean, I love my family. Yes, They're so. amazing. They're horrible. <laughs> it, but, it was, so, somebody posted, said, uh, said, do you ever have anybody in your books that you knew in real life? And I'm like, yeah, most of them were bullies from high school and they don't fare very well in my books. <laughs> it's always hard to decide who I'm going to kill off in a book, but if exactly. I know who they are, they're dead. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, ah, number 14. I remember you. <laughs> Go through the yearbook. Actually, that's probably bad. My yearbook, I might start writing little X's in my yearbook for the different people, but hopefully the cops never show up. I was going to say, don't do that because the moment the cops like, what happened here? Because yeah. the moment one person dies out of your school, no matter, even if it's old age, they're exactly. coming right for you now. Exactly. Exactly. But let's talk about horror. We yes. talked about Halloween. Now let's talk about horror. Horror has changed. Horror is not what it used to be. I mm-hmm. remember growing up and the horror films that I grew up with, and you probably as well, we're in the same sort of the age bracket there. But the horror that it was of yesteryear is not of today. Yeah. I am seeing movies, books, and TV shows that are coming out that are so-called horror. And I watch them and I go, what is this? And the one I want to start with, and I'm just going to, I, I, you might disagree with me because you're a horror fan and you, you like it. But I want to talk about the Saw franchise. The very first Saw, when that came out, that was a good horror, scary movie. I was like, this is a great concept. But Hollywood has this tendency to overdo everything. Yes. And I'm 90% sure there was like 28,000 saws by the end of it. And there are now spinoffs of saws. So there's like seesaws and saucies. As a horror fan, as a horror author, how do you view the horror industry in 2021? It's, you know, until recently, Right. And there's there's been a couple of things that have, that have changed my opinion a little bit. Right. But it's still it's it's the one offs uh, until, until that it's it seems so so watered down. I mean, it, it, it's something that, you know, and, and I know some of these may be 2020, quote, 2021 type type things. Uh, but it was one where, you know, I watched the uh, the new stand. Right. Yeah. And it was something where the original one was such a good movie. You know, it was made for TV and all the good fun stuff. 
and and the book was, was excellent. I mean, I can't, you know, I've even got the audio tape, right? So, so I listened to all of them or, or audible, if you will. I, I do, did have audio tapes, but I don't have a tape player anymore. And, but when I, when I watched that, it tried to watch the new one first because I'd seen the old one. I, I couldn't get through, you know, like maybe 45 minutes of it where I'm going, you know, Hey honey, you want to turn this off and we'll watch the old one again. And, and it just seems so watered down. So you're exactly right with saw and all that. It's like, they get an idea and it's like, okay, let's, let's just bang on it till, till we're done. Um, the reason I say that changed just a little bit recently is I don't know if you've seen the, the series yet. The, I know what you did last summer. I were, I, I, I did the, movies when they first came out but i've never like if there's a tv show i've not seen that yeah and, and again the first movie great interesting yep. idea fun you know yeah it's we're, we're not talking about yeah 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 hard hard to think when you're watching it it's it's just a good fun you know slasher type movie right exactly we, and some of us enjoy those um so so i'm watching the the new series and and, and i'm going okay they they've you know they've changed the characters because they have to nowadays they've got quotas they have to meet which i i would rather pick the best actor or actress for the position but again it's it's one where i'm like okay i'll i'll, I'll put up with it if it's if it's good and and i get to the like it was either the second or third episode where they 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 did something and i was going wow i i applaud them for what they were willing to do as a horror scene and i'm like I'll give this one, you know, give this one a good rating. I, I, I enjoyed what they, what they did. So it was something where if they hadn't did it by the third episode, I probably wouldn't have watched the fourth, uh, but it was something where they're trying to build up, trying to build up tension and stuff like that, which is hard to do nowadays because everybody's got their phone and they're going, oh yeah, yeah I'm watching, yeah, okay, here we go. And, and yeah. Well, and I think that's what's wrong with the horror industry now is because if it doesn't happen and you say three episodes, I'm not even there. I'm like, if it doesn't happen in the first 20 minutes of the episode or of the movie, I'm done. No. Like, yeah. I, I remember like Jaws. Jaws is the best example of a horror film that built up expectations. You were on the cusp of your seat. You did yes. not see the actual shark until about 20 minutes before the, the yes. movie ended. So you had 60 minutes of us just thinking of what this is going to be. And exactly. the anticipation was the scary part. Now exactly. it's, oh, I yeah. just. One, you got to watch in the theater. I mean, I think, I think that that people watching that at home, kids who first time watching, I don't think they would get as much out of it. Um, so yeah, so a lot of the horror in, in my opinion has been watered down. Uh, I do, I, I'm lucky enough that I've met some independent authors uh, so, so I've got, you know, and, and don't get me wrong stuff, stuff that, that, you know, Barker's done stuff that Koontz has done and, and Stephen King, of course, you know, all those people are amazing. And, and, and I, I, you know, I, I like to think I, I like every other one of their books, right? <laughs> so some of them are good yeah. and it might not, might just be, I'm not into that, whatever that story was. Uh, but, but my co-author on my, my latest work, London Blue, she had a, a book, Mask Mayhem Maladies that I really liked. Uh, and I met this person in Australia or New Zealand, I think it's down, down south, it's way down south, different time zone. She's in the future. Uh, so, uh, she's tomorrow. She's Calling tomorrow. the lotto uh, tickets. Ellie Douglas, she wrote this book called Crawlies. And I'm not, I think she's independent, pure independent, but she may do with publishers as well. But it was, I met her on one of those uh, writing groups on Twitter. And I say that because I keep Twitter up there, um, but the, <laughs> with all my different monitors. Uh, but when I, when I met her on, on, on that, you know, I said, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll check your book out. And she had such an interesting take on horror that, that I really enjoyed the book. And I'm going to read more of her stuff. But it was basically, it was from, it was about spiders, of course but it was from their perspective that the humans were evil. And I'm going, okay, that's a new take. That's and I'm like, so now I'm going to bed, making sure that this, you know, these spiders aren't, yeah, sort of, it, it reminded me of arachnophobia. If you ever saw that, that movie. David, was, uh, mm -hmm. oh my God, I can't believe I forget his last name. I can't remember the name either, but that was a really good uh, movie back in the day. I don't know if that was a book too, but it was a really good movie. And and that's one that also built up, right? Because it's, yeah. you know, you had lots of scenes where you just saw the little teeny spider crawling around, not any big things happening. So yeah, so that was 
good. But you know, do you like think the, the do you think the horror industry has lost its way in some sense? Because, I, like, I read your book, Let the Light In. I uh, I, I read Whis- I, well, I haven't read Whispers in the Grave, but I will be, and we'll be talking about li- uh, this later on. I, I tried, I, I, I read Stephen King's new stuff compared to what he wrote in the 80s and the 70s and the 90s when he was first putting it out a book every other like year. Now yes. it seems every other month he comes out with a new book. Yeah. I'm finding the horror industry has lost its way. It, they, they're having a midlife crisis and it's not a horror midlife crisis. It's like a identity crisis. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's, you know, there are some good authors out there that I, that I, that I really like. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie, jo- Johnny dies at the end. Uh, and um, David Wong, I think is the gentleman's name who, who wrote that. Uh, he, there's also another book called this book. Uh, this book is full of spiders. And then below that says, seriously, dude, don't open it. It's full of spiders. <laughs> and so, so, but it's just, it's sort of a comedic take on horror, yeah. which, which is interesting. But there's nasty stuff going on, but you care about the characters. That's the problem I find with some of the new stuff. It, it's like, you know, not to blast books by people that are a lot more famous than I am, but, you know, TikTok and Mr. Murder by Koontz, two excellent books. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to the book on tape uh, while I'm relaxing one day at, at, uh, at home and just, you know, got, got my feet up, just relaxing, no, no, nothing else going on. And I get a little creeped out and I'm not a creeped out kind of guy. <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, this is kind of, yeah, this is kind of strange. Uh, but, but then it comes to, you know, like, like the book intensity and I just couldn't get into the character. Yeah. And I'm like, if I don't care about the character, then why am I still reading this? So, you know, but. Well, and that's my issue is because I, I like a book that gr- holds my attention yeah. that I go, okay, I'm rooting for this person. My yeah. issue is, and this might be a slight at you, when you root for a character and then you kill the author kills them without any expectation, and you go, yes. but, but what happened? So those are the books that I like. I like the ones that you don't see coming. And yes. I find that some authors and some movie producers have a template. They have a template of girl gets lost, girl uh, murderer oh, yeah. comes out, and then murderer kills girl, end of story. Yeah, That's yeah. it. And I'm like, Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, it's you know, and it's one where you know, yes, I kill people in my books. I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I enjoy that part of it, uh, but but actually, in, in all honesty, the way I write, if I know the ending, I stop writing the book. Yeah. So for me, it's one that you know, as as I've been been writing these, you know, I write them as they come to me. So I don't know what's going to happen either. And the only thing was in the very first book, there is this one grandpa in there. And I made up my mind because I liked that guy so much. And it was based on, on my next door neighbor as a kid. And I said, I'm not going to kill him. I'm like, he's going to live forever in my book, no matter what I have to do. I'm like, it, it, you know, whatever's coming to me, if it says kill him, I'm going to be like, nope, nope, sorry, put you away now. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, no, you're exactly right. You have to build up. You have to, you have to care about the people. Uh, it's, it's one where there's a, a, a movie out. I haven't seen it yet, but I watched the previews and it just... It, it looks amazing. It, it's called uh, uh, My Heart Can't Beat Unless You Tell It To. And it seems from the preview like there's there's three siblings. Uh, the one sibling is either a real life vampire or thinks he is. And the sibling, the, the older brother and sister go out and start killing people to give him blood. And in, in the very first part of the preview, you know, the kid's sitting there at the table and he's like, I just want to go out. I want to go somewhere. And they're like, you know, you can't, you can't go around people. And he's like, I just want to go out. And he slams the table and his food, which you don't know what it is at the time, flies across the, the room. And, 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 and she goes, do you know what we had to do for this? And then it cuts to the very next scene and it shows her hitting some guy over the head, oh, wow. shows the brother dumping somebody in a trunk. And I'm like, okay, that's, that looks great. Uh, I, I don't know if it's as good as, as the, the preview looks like, 
but it's one I, I definitely it's on my list to watch. It's it's one where I try to watch stuff free on on Amazon and the other services. So I keep an eye and it's going, okay, it's three ninety nine. Do I buy it? Do I wait? And, and but it's, it's, I I have still not seen the movie Avatar because I'm still waiting for it to officially become free, where I don't even have to pay for electricity to watch the movie. That's how I like boycotting on that movie I'm doing. Um, but let's talk about some of the good. Let's talk about some of the good because uh, I have like I was going through my list of like I was just trying to go through my head and my my mind's not the best right now. But I'm trying to well, go through. What, let, let me ask you a question. Okay. Turn the tables here. Oh unscripted no. Question. <laughs> unscripted question. It's all day. We're living on the edge now. What is your favorite? horror book other than mine of course what's your favorite horror story that you've read what, what would you think i'm gonna have to go back to stephen king okay and i'm gonna say misery nice the book is better than the movie really i've, I've never read the book i will add that to my list of, of books to read and or listen to on all. so so okay i need to clarify this okay the book is better than the kathy bates movie okay because Misery was done twice by a movie okay. because Stephen King was pissed off at how uh, Misery turned out. It went completely against his uh, what he wanted uh, in the book. So if you read the book, yes, have you seen the movie? I've seen the movie, yes. The Kathy Bates movie. So when you watch the movie, after you watch the movie, read the book and you go, well, that wasn't the movie I watched. Oh, interesting. All. And that's what pisses me off. So when it comes to books, I love books. I yes. I hate when off when when move, uh, movie producers destroy books when they put turn it into a, a movie. Um, the case in point, Dune. Uh, this new one that just came out recently, I despise it. I watched oh. the first fifteen minutes of it, and I said, "Nope, oh. can't do it anymore." Because I like the book. I'm a book oh, fan. Bummer. That's a bummer to hear because I was hoping that they hadn't ruined that so well i think they did because i'm okay. i'm a book i'm a book originalist right I understand you I stick understand. to the book script you don't divert and you don't try to make people who they're not in the book i'm sorry yes. so exactly exactly and, and 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 now the only thing i will preface it by just in case there's any producers out there I will change my name if you give me enough money so so as far as for changing something in one of my books it's all good. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a children's movie now. It's not a horror anymore. <laughs> but there's somebody there's pink elephants in now. That's the, that's the bad guys now. Pink elephants. Exactly. So I, so I said, Hey, as, as, as an indie author, would you change your character's name for if a producer wanted you to? And I'm like, yeah, I changed my own name. If they gave me enough money. I don't, yeah. But no, I, I do agree a hundred percent or a thousand percent as a reader though. Uh, it, it's one where, you know, uh, Salem's Lot, that, that's that's my favorite book, uh, yep. favorite audio book, favorite book. And I was, is it good? Because I saw it and I was like, should I pick it up? Should I not pick it up? And I was like, nah, I'm just going to leave it and move on and see. Because I, I have I have issues with going with outside my author knows. If I don't know the author, I'm like, mm. well, Stephen King wrote Salem's no. Lot. No. Yes. Which Stephen one am I King thinking about that? Salem's Lot. Yeah. Yeah, definitely read Salem's Lot by Stephen King. It it is it is an amazing, fun. Is there another book. Salem Lot? I don't think so. Might be, but I don't think so. But it's it's one where you're rooting for the good guys, and and you're you're afraid okay. that something's bad going to happen. And until you've read it for the fifteenth time, you don't know something's bad going to happen. So after you've read it for the 15th time, you're going, okay, I know this is going to happen. Why does she do this? And <laughs> they keep doing it every single time. But, you know, it's it, now it'd be an interesting way to write a book, you know, where the ending changes every time you read it. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, but we, but no, we can all like, go back to R.L. Stein's Goosebumps for that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> Choose your own adventure. I remember those. Those are fun. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out Salem's Lot. And the movie, the original made for TV, is not one that you're going to have your cell phone with you while you watch because it's not it's a slow build slow burn uh but it, it's actually they they hold pretty true to the book so i i enjoyed the first one the the remakes and all that good stuff weren't weren't there but yeah definitely read sales lot you'll you enjoy that one 
I can't believe I didn't pick it up. It must have been just like I must not have read the the author's name, and I just saw it, and I was like, "This doesn't look good." So, well, that's something too. I'm 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 making you know I'm working on different covers on mine, trying to make sure that I get you know the prominence where people's eyes are drawn. So that yeah. could very well be that on that one, you know, it's it's more the Salem's Lot than the Stephen King, so you don't see that that's him. But, or it was on the spine of the cover or something like that. But exactly. I will look that up because I know uh, our local bookstore, our used bookstore right around the corner has a, uh, a book sale going on this weekend. So I might, nice. stop, this, I might stop by today and go pick it up. Um, oh my God, now now I'm pissed off that I've... I haven't <sighs> well, no, no, now you got a brand new Stephen King book. I do, now I've from, got a Stephen King. From the King. days where he was taking this time to produce them. <laughs> But Stephen King, if you want to come on the show, please come on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stephen, if you want to collaborate on something, let me know. Even if you want to write it in three days, let's go. <laughs> let's uh, do it. Yeah. Even if you want to change my name while we write it, let's do it. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Stephen King. No, I was, Stephen King. <laughs> I was killed in my 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 co-author in her first book. Uh, she said she said she goes, "Do you want to be in my book?" I was like, "Sure." So, so there's a character with my name that gets killed. I'm like, "Yay!" <laughs> Aww. I want to be in a book. Someone there needs to write go. a book about me, David. I, that's I, your challenge. I, I, I will I will work to add you to a story. We and we will we will do that. It's, it's kill fun. me podcast style. <laughs> I, yeah, the podcast from horror. Or, there you go. Um. We talked about the good. What, yeah, well, like, what talk, is we talked about all the good? So yeah, got a couple more good. What, what's your other good stuff? Because you were starting something when I rudely interrupted you. Um, Rosemary Baby. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm a classic horror fan when it comes to books, and one of the new ones. And this one I had to think about because I was like, uh, would it be on my list? Would it not be on my list? We need to talk about Kevin. I don't, which one is that? I think I've seen that, but I don't, uh, I don't remember offhand. I mean, Shriven. S-H-R-I-V-E-N. Shriven? I don't know how to pronounce the last one. Lionel. I have not seen that. Is that good? It's a good book. Good it's book. a I will good read that. book. I will um, read that. Yet again, an originalist. I like, I like when people stick to the yeah, yeah. script. Yeah, no, no, I'll read the book. The, the movie's not bad. I'm just... I will, just, I will read you just have to give and take. Uh, but then also this, this, I, I just want to make sure I say this right. Keep in the light. I think I've heard about this oh, guy. Like this that. is a really good book. I, it is actually a really good book for anyone who hasn't listened to the episode. Go back. It was episode 35, I think, or 36. Yeah, this Scroll one. down and please check it out. Um, and then, We'll talk about this, why it's bad in a few minutes here, but It, the book, Stephen King's It. I'm a Stephen King fan of his original stuff. Um, yes. I, I'm trying to branch out on my horror book, and I, I, how do I put this correctly? I always have trouble trying to find new authors because I don't like one-off authors like yes. you. You have books after books, right? I'm trying. And as we talked about in the in our original episode together, some of them are woven in together. Exactly. I like that. I like an anthology. Even if the characters yeah. are different, I like that Stephen King and yourself are like, you can go and read a book and be like, hey, this place is in this book as well. Or this locate, this, this person made an appearance in this book. So I like the book It. I yes. like the original TV movie It, yes. both chapters. Yes. Yes. I did not like the new adaptation of It, yes. the the new ones, which was filmed in my hometown. So I oh, really? can't really I, I can't diss it too much, but I was not a fan. I they they changed too much. Yes. Yes, it, it, I, I was not a fan of the new It. Uh, I, I watched it just because I wanted to see it, if you will. Uh, but it, it's one where they, they, they changed too much of it. The original, and the original even holds up today. You know, just people yeah. don't have their cell phones. So, yeah. I mean, there are shows that, that hold up and there are shows that don't. And if, if you like horror movies, you can be scared by the original It. Uh, and as far as for the book goes, you know, the, the, the book was, was just amazing. Uh, I never read 
until after I graduated high school. I actually didn't read until I graduated college. It was something where every book report, hopefully they don't come back and take my diploma, but every book was based on the same two books that I read once. <laughs> and, and so from then on, I would just alternate. And because I just, I was, I, you know, one, I was dyslexic and didn't really know the consequences and all that good stuff of how to read properly and all that good stuff. Uh, but then I finally found a genre to read and, and I fell in love with it. And, and Stephen King was definitely one of those, one of those authors. And, and so that's why, you know, when, when I say reading it, that was something I read about two years ago, because seeing a book that thick was not something that young Dave was going to take on. Oh, I loved it. Um, so you, you've read it recently. Yes. You've seen the original movie. You've seen the remakes or the original two TV movies, the, 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 the it part one, it part two, the new ones. Spoiler alert for anyone who has never read the books. Yes, yes. Were you pissed off that the turtle didn't show up? Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I I tried to talk to people about this. It's like, why are you getting upset over a turtle? What turtle are you talking about? It's, 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 it's one of those ones that all of that is sort of Stephen King's way to go back to, uh, geez, I'm blanking on the name, the guy that wrote the Cthulhu. Uh, Mm -hmm. Cthulhu author who was that that was uh H.P. Lovecraft geez sorry, sorry Mr. Lovecraft don't don't come and haunt me I uh, can't believe I forgot your name for 30 seconds I, I'm seeing all the trolls now are going to be like I'm getting Twitter things already uh but no so so uh there's actually a special on H.P. Lovecraft and and he was not a nice person anybody that says oh well, he's doing horrible yeah he wasn't a nice guy but he wrote some amazing things and we wouldn't have a lot of the books and movies today that we have if it wouldn't have been for him. Weird tales and all that good fun stuff. Anytime you see a creature that has tentacles, that's direct from Lovecraft. So aliens, all that good fun stuff. You know, uh, the thing, if you remember the original thing and then the remake, the original was, well, actually not the original original, which was good too, the black and white, but the one with Kurt Russell was really good as well. Okay, yep, yep. Yes, yeah, so there was one earlier that was black and white. It was good, but it, it you know it was black and white, so it's as good as black and white are. You know, if you're not if you're not uh, Vincent Price, black and white sometimes are iffy. Uh, but but the uh, you know when it when it comes to that, I I really enjoyed that. But that was also something that's directly out of Cthulhu. So yes, yeah, so the turtle and the fact that there's these extra dimensional creatures that are you know messing with the puny humans if you will yeah. is, is is a direct thing and and he, he also says that he he pays homage to to him as well he, he you know Stephen King liked uh Lovecraft from everything I've read anyway and this is why I like books I books books you're getting it from the author right yeah you're hearing right from the horse's mouth of what they they want you to read. And when you're reading a book, even if it's a horror, a suspense, a thriller, you enjoy what the author is trying to convey and you can exactly. picture it in your head when you watch a movie. And this is why I might have an issue with movies in general. When you watch a movie, you're watching what the director wants you to watch. Yes. And the people who are out there right now yelling at YouTube, yelling at their car radio saying, well, you're an originalist. You need to be able to adapt to things. I will adapt when things are good. If yes. you shit on a book that is well-respected, then I will not like you. Oh, it's even, even you know, uh, shitting on old TV shows and old movies. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Depp, but but you ruined, ruined, you know, uh, uh, Dark Shadows. I mean, that was just the dumbest thing, you know. And and you killed, you killed, uh, oh, the Lone Ranger, and and I'll never forgive you for that either. Uh, so it's it's one that yes, you've got had some good things. I was a Jump Street fan, woo, uh, but. <laughs> The kids nowadays don't even know what Jump Street was, yeah. <laughs> but, but it was something that, you know, I was hoping, I was still hoping that was going to be good. And, and, and I've heard that Rob Zombie is doing the Munsters remake. Oh. And I'm hoping that he takes it either complete horror and it's just really good in this Rob Zombie horror movie, or he keeps with the genre and stays funny and light. I'm okay either way. I just don't want it to be, I hope they don't water it down too much because that was such a fun show to watch. 
Exactly. Oh, and it was okay. it was comical at the time, but it still had that air of, okay, this is believable. Yes. Exactly. The issue with Rob Zombie, and this is this is my tangent on Rob Zombie now, because he ruined one of my favorite movie John movie series of all times, which is which Halloween. One? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure what your opinion on that was, but no, no, I, I was not a Rob Zombie Halloween fan. Rob Zombie needs to just dial it back a bit. Not yeah. everything needs to be blood and guts like yeah, he yeah. did. Sometimes it can just be rolled back. Yeah, and and if you want blood and guts, he's got some of the best you know top three <laughs> movies that you know that are just you know that thousand corpses you know House of a Thousand Corpses all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of those, but that's when I'm watching those. I'm not you know I liked you know the other the original Halloween was just so awesome. Have you seen the new one? Uh, no, I haven't seen the new one. Is it any I good? haven't either. I haven't I'm seen scared. it yet. I, I I exactly me too, and that's why I'm like. Know something bad's gonna happen here yes. jamie lee curtis is a great actress i'm happy she's oh, back yeah. but at what point in time can her and michael myers survive decapitations after like it there's a point in time when it just becomes unrealistic guys yeah. and i understand that is but still exactly exactly now now i got another one for you have you okay. seen or read the book the ruins Check that out. It's it's called it's the ruins. Let me get the author for everybody. Like R U I N S. R U I N S. Yes, and, and it's uh, it's 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 a movie, and it's uh, if I can find out who it was written by. Do, 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 do. Okay. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to find it. Uh oh. oh. But but yes, it's the ruins. Uh, let's see here. Ruins. Uh, but yeah, it's called The Ruins. It's, a, it's, I guess you call it an ecological horror. So some people are into that, some people aren't. Uh, it's not It's not big on saying it's because of, you know, any global warming and all that good stuff. So they don't go into that. Uh, but it's it's an eco ecological threat, if you will. And it's called The Ruins. It's by Scott Smith is the author. And it is it is really good. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a really good book. And it's based in the Amazon. People go out for just a fun day, and next thing they know, you know, there's there's bad stuff going on. And it's 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 a good read. I enjoyed that one. Uh, it's one where you're 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 they surprise you with with some of the stuff going on. So that that's nice. Uh, there's there's another one that's a movie that I haven't seen yet. G A I A. Have you seen that movie yet? And I think it's based on a book, but I haven't checked it out. Uh, it's basically there's a um, an injured forest ranger, it said, was was rescued by two people <laughs> who are sort of off the grid survivalists, and it I'm looks gonna... like the jungle is just the monster in this one, like the entire jungle or that section of the jungle. So it looked very interesting. So I'm, I, I want to check that out. But yeah, definitely check out the ruins. I think you'll like that. I certainly will. One last book I want to talk about because this 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 kickstarted the horror genre. And this goes back to I just had to I just had to Google it because I didn't I thought it was a little bit earlier than this, but it's not. This okay. goes back to 1818. 1818. The very Hill first House? the what? Hill House or not? No. Nope. Oh, okay, which one? Frankenstein. Ah, okay. The original and I would say uh, it really kickstarted the quote unquote nice. horror genre, in my opinion. Have you read it? I have read Frankenstein. I've listened to Frankenstein. Uh, it's it's one where where I enjoy that. And 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 as I told you, I, I didn't read. And so for anybody who's a kid and don't read, you know, find anything you're interested into, even even the labels of cereal boxes, and just start reading, and then you'll get better at it. Uh, put your finger under the under the words and move it back and forth if you're dyslexic. You know, it, there's different things you can do. Um, so that's my public service announcement there. Uh, but the original Frankenstein, the original Mary Dracula, Shelley. Yes, we're, we're two ones that I, you know, I said, I'm going to read these. And so, so in my, in my bookshelf, I still have those two books because it was just something special that I was like, I'm going to do this. And Dracula was hard to read because uh, <laughs> of the whole letters format and all that good stuff. And, but, but Mary Shelley's Frankenstein was, was just, you know, it was, it was an amazing book. And so far, I haven't seen a movie that's really done it justice. And, and that's what's sad. 
Right. What are you talking about? Young Frankenstein by Mel Brooks. <laughs> well, now, uh, if you want to go comedy wise, Young Frankenstein is the, the it, it is, you know, what knockers. I mean, what else can you say? Uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoy uh, young, young Frankenstein, Frau Blucher, right? <laughs> and all the good one liners. And I was even watching uh, outtakes from, from that just the other day because it's, it's, I, I really enjoy that, that movie. Uh, but yeah, no, I haven't, you know, there hasn't been a good one. Uh, I did try my hand at writing a, a Frankenstein book, believe it or not, uh, but it was one that it, it actually broke me. It was something that what I was trying is I was trying to write it from the standpoint of each one of those body parts still had somebody's soul attached to it. So, okay. and the reason Frankenstein monster was really so upset was not because his brain was Abby normal, <laughs> but it was because he had all of those different voices from all of those different parts inside of him screaming and yelling at the same time, trying to have control. And okay. so that is the reason he was that way. In, 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 at least in what I was making in the new book. Uh, but again, it was one that it just got, it was something where I wanted to write as sort of pay homage to, to, to her and, and to that, to that book. But it was just something where I, I, I didn't, I wasn't doing it justice yet. So I said, okay, I'm going to put this off to the side. Maybe I'll pick it up someday. Maybe I won't. But it was just something that, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm a huge fan of that one. Um, you, we have talked about books. We have talked about uh, semi TV, somewhat TV shows. But I want, I want to ask this because we're at the hour mark here, and I just want to make sure that we, uh, for our listeners, uh, don't go on too yeah. long. But I want to talk about the top fives. Yes. Let's talk about your top five movies that you would recommend to someone who is looking for movies to watch tonight on this this horrorist of horror moot days in the calendar. What movies or TV shows should somebody go watch tonight? Okay, uh, I would say, uh, of course, if if you're more old school, the original Dawn of the Dead. I mean, that's, you know, either don't either the original one or the remake where it had the track star zombies for the first time. Watch those. If you are looking for something that's more just pure fun, horror, Cabin in the Woods. It has Thor in it. That is just a fun movie. That's one of my go tos. I, I, I really, really enjoy that uh, a lot. Uh, Evil Dead, the old and the new. They, they are two rock solid. The new one, actually, they didn't mess it up. It surprised me. I was, I was, <laughs> I was waiting for them to mess it up. And, so I've got to ask the question, though. Okay. Which Evil Dead? Are you talking about Evil Dead or Evil Dead 2? Because they're basically the same film. Yes, yes. Evil Dead, the first one, is, is for, for your horror. And as you get to Army of Darkness and the other, it's more comedy. But I, I love Bruce Campbell. Bruce, you can be in any of my books anytime as long as you pay for the movie. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so I think I'm at what four now? You're at three right now. You got Cabin oh, in the Woods, okay. Dawn of the Dead, Evil Dead. Let's go with. Uh, did you ever watch Red Dragon? It was Hannibal. the it was the, the, the original horror. one or yes. the sequel to the Hannibal, which with Edward Norton, William no, Patterson, the, the, or the, the original one? The original, the original yes, Red I'd... Dragon. <laughs> with Hannibal Lecter's in it as sort of the, you know, inside guy, if you will. And, and, and it has the guy, uh, Brian uh, Cox, will, Brian yeah, Cox plays Hannibal Lecter. Just in case people watch, uh, but it was, uh, it was really good. Uh, it's, it's before the movie Silence of the Lambs, right. As far as that goes in, in the book, Silence of the Lambs was based on that. Uh, that, that is another really good one. And then, then the other one I would have to go to, uh, is, is the thing I enjoyed the thing a lot with Kurt Russell. Uh, I think that that one puts a lot of dynamics on people and trust and things like that. And it was just such a good, you know, such a good movie. Uh, and then if you want blood and gore, go with the trilogy from Rob Zombie. I'm sorry. House of a Thousand Corpses, <laughs> Devil's Reject, <laughs> and, and, and Three from Hell. I mean, Sid Haig, I mean, he was just perfect in those, you know, Captain Spaulding. Uh, but again, you're watching those because you want that type of horror, right? So that, that, that's my list. Uh, and, and I'll tell you a, a secret thing I've got. So, so of course, Amazon came out, right? And, and, and Amazon Prime, where you can purchase movies. The very first movie that I purchased, most likely you've never heard of or never watched, it's called Student Bodies. Well, 
Red Dead sometime, it, it is basically Scream and all of those comedy movies before that was a genre. Oh, wow. And it's just, it's, it's fun, it's stupid. It's just, you know, it, it's not, it's not, don't take it serious, just watch and enjoy. So. I feel like I know that movie. I feel like I've heard of that movie this week, and I don't know why. I, I feel like I've watched something and someone said, watch that movie as well. So I will certainly make sure I do that. For me, and this this is going to show you how much I like the classic horror yes. villains. The Shining. Yes. The Shining, The Shining, The Shining. Yep. Halloween. The first good. one. I'm, I'm there with you. The original the original Friday the 13th. Yes. The very first one. Yes. If you have not seen this movie, you... 1980. Right? 1980. Yes. You need yes. to watch this movie because it zigs and zags in the most appropriate oh. times that you go, what the hell is happening right now? And every, you, you jump when you're in the theater. Yeah. And it, it's awesome. My favorite horror villain of all times is Freddy Krueger, so I've always had a special place for Nightmare on Elm Street. I will say some of the original ones were a little crazy, like Dreamwalkers, but we won't go there, or Season of Witch, but again, we won't talk about that one either. Did you ever do the Freddy versus Jason? I loved Freddy versus Jason. I enjoyed the <laughs> heck out of that. It was just fun. It wasn't, and there wasn't, you know, again, some of these things for anybody who's not a horror fan, I don't know why you've listened so far <laughs> yeah, this long, but like, good on you. But if it, 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 it's just, it's just sort of like mind candy. Freddy versus Jason was mind candy. That's what and it was. I was all, so I remember when that movie, this, this is going to get me on a tangent here and you're going to be here for a little bit longer, but I remember when that all movie good. came out. And there was speculation that they wanted to do a crossover, basically a battle royale with everyone, with Ash yes. from Evil Dead, yes. with Michael oh. Myers, with everyone, like the Leprechaun, you name it, they wanted to do it. That and would have been so good. Exactly. And I was like, okay, it would have been the Avengers before the Avengers. And I would have been freaking just loving that whole movie. Oh, that would have, I would have been there. I mean, if they could have got Del Toro or whatever to, to, yeah, if they could, they could still do it. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Hey, Hollywood, here's your million dollar idea right now. We're, we're copywriting it. (laughs) And and even Leprechaun. I mean, you know, it it depends on the, you know, Reanimator, right? Mm -hmm. Phantasm. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a ton of movies. Pinhead. <laughs> the, the latest Phantasm is actually pretty good as well. They 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 catch up with where they left off at, oh, at wow. the end of the original ones, and it's sort of like 30 years later, the one guy's still running. You know, what wants to save his buddy, and it's just it's it, it's good. It's again mind candy, right? The Hell last right. I ha- I had Evil Dead on my list as well. Nice. I did have Evil Dead, and the did last you see one, the new one. I have not because I'm afraid because Bruce Campbell's not in it, right? Watch the new one. I, 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 they did a good job. I will watch it tonight. Nice. Um, my last one, and this is a throwback because anyone okay. who has Showtime right now is getting a watered down, stupid version of this TV show that should never have been made. And that is Child's Play. Yes. Chucky was horror i remember watching this as a kid without my parents knowledge and freaking out about my toys coming alive at one time and killing me it was it was awesome now did you ever see that trilogy of terror that's on amazon right now it's the one that has that little teeny doll where where it's got the sign that says do not remove uh on on his uh his little necklace or whatever and and it falls off of course uh, watch that that's actually one of the ones like the uh that that is the same actors in the movies in three different parts of a movie sort of like that one tv show did right where it's the same people year yeah. after year but it's a different different theme uh that's the first one on that and and it's called trilogy of terror it's it's really you know it's it's older it's like say 70s type type horror but but it's it's that was one that was before Chucky and and was sort of that same thing because there's a little doll that comes to life and it's it's he's just he's vicious <laughs> so and uh, but definitely watch that. I will still say this to the day I die and I did not put it on my list. The scariest and I want yours that I want your answer after this. The scariest moment in any movie, in my opinion, 
is in 1993's Jurassic Park when the T-Rex ate the guy off the toilet. Never in my life have I never wanted to go to the washroom ever again, even knowing in my head that dinosaurs aren't real. The, the, the horror in my head for the rest of like that year and the year after was I need to like keep a door open. What if something happened? So that was, that would have to be my most, the, the scariest moment in any movie because I was not expecting it. I think at that moment I ran out of the movie theater because I was that scared. What about yourself? What was the scariest moment in a movie you've ever seen? It, it was more psychologically scary, part, okay. but it was, it, if you ever seen Prince of Darkness, it's got uh, Victor Wong in it, uh, James Parker from Simon Simon, uh, and also Alice Cooper's in it, who plays this homeless guy standing on the street. And what I, what it was basically about was that there's another dimension where there's evil thing coming through and he's coming through this mirror. And, and when, when somebody's reaching at that mirror and somebody else from the other side is coming through, that just creeped me out. So then I get in the car with my cousin and, and the rear view mirror is there and I reach up towards you. He slapped my hand down about as hard as you could slap. He's like, don't even, man. He's like, don't like, no. even. So he's like, just don't do it. So, so yes, yeah, so, so Prince of Darkness ha- had my, you know, and there's been a lot of my, I enjoy horror. So I enjoy that jump and all the good fun stuff. But but it was more, and I like how I call it fun stuff. But but yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, now book wise, have you ever read House on Haunted Hill? Uh, I, read I that. It's it's an older one. I... It it is one that what is great about it is it's an old ghost story. So anybody looking to start a ghost story haunted house thing, there's been several movies. Vincent Price was in one, uh, but it's actually one that Stephen King talks about how good it was. So, so read House on Haunted Hill. That, that, that's a fun one. You'll like that. I certainly will. My last question for you. Sir. We've talked about the good. We've talked about a lot of things over the last hour and 10 minutes. I'm going to ask you this. In your opinion, then I'll, I'll give you mine. I want to know what you think. What is the most underrated horror film out there right now that people need to actually watch? Underrated. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a... Uh... So I'll give you my. I'll give you mine while you're thinking of yours. Oh no, I, I know mine, but I don't. You've not seen it, so I, I know you're not going to know about it. But what is again, it? I'll, I'll watch it. To, I'll watch it. Halloween. That, it's with that same. It's that same one. It's the ruins. Uh, if you Google the ruins and see the the main actor in the film uh, is just so so good, uh, and they didn't ruin it. I mean, it's not exactly like the book, right? Because you know, they they can't ever make them exact. That would be against the rules. Uh, but but it's it's the ruins and it's just such a good story and and you know you've got you've got the drama and stuff like that from the people who are you know you know they one of them wants to just stay in and relax at this at, at the, the 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 resort and stuff like that the other ones want to go out and go on this adventure and stuff like that and it, and it gets to be sort of a survival type thing where it's you know not only is there something bad going on but the good people are trying to keep each other from doing bad stuff as well because they're putting them in more danger and all that. I won't give any more away, but yeah, that's, it's an underrated film. Uh, the other one would be Johnny Dies in the End. Just a fun movie. It's, it's I've literally hard. written that down and I've written down the runes. And oh, Odd Thomas. Did you watch that? No. Nope. Oh, watch Odd Thomas. It's, it's actually a Koontz book, really good. Uh, this guy sees supernatural things. So, so yeah, those are good. They're, that's a really good, it's the, a fun, fun uh, uh, book as well as it's a good show. You know, the whole, the whole prospect to be able to see what's not there and interact with it is, is always been something I've been fascinated with. You know, I don't know if you remember that guy that was on TV way back when, where he would talk to the people and say, yes, your, your cousin's here. Yeah. And he was so good at that. You know, John Edwards. Was, yeah. 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 Whether it was real or not, he was so good at this, the stick part of it that you believed he was really talking to them. I hope he was, but I, I, I don't, I never, you know, none of my relatives have ever called me up through him. So I can't say for sure. <laughs> 
So the movie I'm going to recommend that I think is the is one of the most underrated horror films out there right now, and that is Thirteen Ghosts. Ghosts. This this was a psychological uh, supernatural horror film with Tony Shalhoub, <laughs> Monk. Um, I've not seen that. I will watch that. It is. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but who hasn't seen it? But if you think Cabin in the Woods is good, yep, you will like this movie. Nice. Cabin. I watched Cabin in the Woods after you and I talked in the last episode because I said I hadn't seen it, and I I, I watched it and I was like, oh, okay, I can see. In the last fifteen minutes of that movie, I wanted to shoot myself because I was like, I did not see this coming. So here we are. I saw that. I saw that because it's got that one guy who's in Scream or, or one of those movies as well, right? I can't remember his name. Matthew uh, Lillard. I think so. I think so. Uh, Shaggy so. off of Scooby Doo. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. remember seeing that, and that was really good. It I, was, I'm but that I'm not a lot of people remember it because it was well, one of those like, okay, I liked it, but watch it again on this Halloween. Watch it because I, I wonder what it is. is it the title that makes it harder to remember. I I think it's because Tony Shalhoub is in it, and I yeah, think yeah. a lot of people think it's going to be a comedy, and then Matthew uh, Lillard is a comedic actor. Plus, yeah, yeah. It had come out at the exact same time as Scooby-Doo when he was doing the live action. So a lot of people were like, we're not going to see this. Go watch it. It is one of the most, like, I'm a sci-fi fan as well when it comes to this. So it this movie basically it hits all the, the cylinders. Yep. Exactly. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. I would do it all over again. Very cool. Um, David, thank you for this. This has been... <laughs> I always say to my guests before we start, it's going to be 30 to 40 minutes. And then by <laughs> about an hour, I'm like, oh, it's been an hour. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> well, all good. And we can, we can keep going. So if people want it, we'll have the, uh, you know. Have part two in two. 2022. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> or we'll do the it version. 27 years from now, we'll sit down and do this again. <laughs> I might look a little different by then. But. I think we all will. <laughs> <laughs> the Tales of the Crypt Keeper. Come on. Exactly. Exactly. Which was. Tales from the Crypt, good, fun movie. I mean, again, you, some of these things you have to, you know, you have to su suspend belief, right? And all that good, fun stuff to enjoy the movies. And, and there's people that they can't do that. It's like a 47 meters down. And, and the reason I didn't go for that one on, on, the, on the movies is because it's, you know, it's a shark movie. It's not necessarily horror. So a lot of times people want horror. They want monsters, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but shark well, movie-wise, 47 meters down was fun. You're telling me Sharknado is not a horror film? <laughs> I did enjoy Sharknado. I was a Sharknado fan. I don't know if they've made 15 yet, but I'll probably watch it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they have gotten gone through all the B actors that they can find for Sharknado <laughs> 1, 2, 9, 8, 52. Nice. But nice. thank you so much for this. Um, for well. those who are listening, uh, enjoy your Halloween night. Uh, take some recommendations that you've just heard over the last hour and a bit. And watch some horror films because exactly. take your family, put your cell phones upstairs in your bedroom or wherever your bedroom is, sit down as a family and just scare the living shit out of your kids at least once in your life. Exactly. That, that's perfect advice. Uh, check out some of the local theaters. I've heard that they have. Oh, like, I can't believe I almost oh. forgot. I almost forgot this. Oh, Whispers in the Gray. Oh yes, yes. You have oh, a second you. book. Was I, 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 I do, I do, which is good. I, I mean, this is more about but but the audience. whispers of gray. Sorry, whispers of gray, and it's book two in the Keep of the Light series. Uh, this one uh, is is about whereas the first one was about shadow creatures. This one is about a, a possession, somebody's possessed, and which is a very bad thing. Uh, and it's 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 one where you know there's a person who's injured and he's trying to get through the you know trying to recover because he knows that there's something bad going on. And then I do have coming out in January if if everything works well something called Bad Humans. So I'll get back on your show to talk about that because you know writing these type of horror where there's monsters and creature. Is, is, is fun and exciting and all that good stuff. And, and I didn't take it personally, if you will. You know, I've killed lots of people in these. But in, in the other one, it's Bad Humans is about a, a kid who finds a pocket watch 
and he can instantly see the evil that somebody has done. But then what's worse is he sees it from their victim's perspective and he feels it. So he sees and feels it from both perspectives. And, and so that's one for me that was very hard to write because I was getting emotionally involved in it. And there's one character who she's a uh, ambulance. Uh, she's, she's a me medic in an ambulance and she uh, she's addicted to the adrenaline of saving people. And the problem is she lives in a small town, so she doesn't get time to do it all the time. Uh, so her hobby is to toss bricks off of bridges so that it causes accidents. And then she gets to go in and try to save people's lives. And writing those scenes from both sides, from the victim and from the, the, the person doing it, was was definitely, uh, you know, it, it was a challenge. So, but yeah, so hopefully I'll have the next one out in January and then I'll just keep on going is what I'm trying. Awesome. Um, I should also mention this. We have run a social media giveaway for yes. David's first book. Yes. We are pleased to announce that we had about, I just was trying to do basic math here, 16 submissions. Nice. And Donald McNeil, I just wanted to make sure I got his last name right here because I thought it was Neil, but I was like, it can't be Donald Neil, but I apologize, Donald McNeil. <laughs> Donald McNeil, you will be getting a copy of the uh, audio version of Keeping the Light. Uh, you will be uh, sent the links uh, shortly. Please reach out to the Cross Board Interview Podcast via a direct message or wherever you get your uh, information from. So send us a message and we'll make sure that we connect and we send you the book. Um, David, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Anytime. Just, just let me know. I, I enjoy your show. And, oh. and you take care. Thank Stay you. Stay safe on Halloween. There you go. Uh, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, have yourself a safe and excellent rest of your Halloween. Uh, we will be back tomorrow morning, November 1st, with an all new week long series of episodes. But also, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, which you're watching. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, go over and follow us, hit the subscribe button, and head over to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that fun stuff. And hit the like and follow button there. And if you want to support the show, independent journalism can't happen without backers. So please go over to our Patreon and uh, give as much as you can, 2 $3. It does help the show continue on. David, thank you so much for doing this. Thank and you. Happy Halloween. Yep, happy Halloween.